Arc Jet Rocket Engine, an exploration of electrothermal thrust. Not long ago, I learned of a very interesting form of propulsion known as electrothermal propulsion. This class of thrusters uses electricity to heat up a single propellant in order to achieve a higher specific impulse or engine efficiency. One such way to heat the propellant with electricity is to use a contained electrical arc to superheat the propellant before it exits through the nozzle. This type of thruster is called an arc jet, and it is used on some satellites as well as plasma wind tunnels. This presents a significant challenge because arc jets often use a comparatively low voltage and extremely high current, meaning they either only work in a vacuum or need to strike an arc to form plasma. For my first design, I decided to use a 22 volt battery to make a high current arc very similar to a small welding arc. Using an all too flammable experimentation setup, I discovered that the arc first needed to be struck and then stretched out to become stable over a gap of about 3 millimeters. I also found that my electrodes needed to be made out of graphite in order to not weld them to each other and cause a short circuit. Along with the fuse and manual shutoff, the graphite also worked as a power limiting resistor that limited arc current and further heated up the propellant more like a resistor jet. The only big issue with graphite is that it would be quickly used up as it was heated and vaporized. This meant that I needed a feed system to be able to both strike the arc and feed in the graphite as it was used up. I used a high torque servo controlled by an Arduino to strike the arc and then slide in the graphite electrode. Fitted to one of my test stands, this engine was ready for its first test. Unfortunately, this version of the engine had a whole host of problems, including an inadequate air supply, numerous constrictions in the feed plumbing, and the graphite feed system that would repeatedly get jammed up. The graphite was also ablated away much more quickly than expected, being completely used up after only a few seconds. I initially thought that the jammed feed system was breaking up the graphite, so I redesigned the feed system and fixed the plumbing issues by transitioning the engine to my other rocket test stand. This stand had a much larger air accumulator that worked well before with similar air-hungry engines. Even with the redesign of the graphite feed system, it was still burning through its electrode really quickly, and now to make things worse, it had gasketing issues. Looking at the Schlieren imaging of the test, it also appears that the graphite would plug up the nozzle when it struck an arc, and would continue partially blocking the feed system as it fed in more graphite. This blocking of the nozzle and the mast used in the graphite meant that the specific impulse was much worse. It got an abysmal 18.91 seconds of specific impulse with the arc on, as opposed to the 21.13 seconds with an unobstructed cold gas test. This was definitely not the result I was looking for, so I needed to change the design and abandon the idea of using a graphite electrode. Instead, I decided to trade current for voltage so I wouldn't need to strike an arc or have a non-multiple electrode. Now that I'll be using a 15,000 volt neon transformer as a voltage source, it's time to get serious about electrical safety. Although not instantly lethal, the high voltage 30 milliamp current still presents a risk of electrocution without proper isolation and grounding. However, that small current with such a high voltage is still able to produce plenty of heat. Instead of a movable electrode, it will use an old spark plug with part of it machined away to expose the electrode. I also used a swirl injector for the air and a longer constrictor section for the arc to travel down. With everything on insulated standoffs, the test stand grounded, and the high voltage wires held to 3D printed spacers, it was now time to try out this new design.
Immediately, it was clear that I underestimated the power of 15,000 volts, with a large arc easily jumping across the spark plug insulator. This happened because of the much higher pressure inside of the engine. The more pressure air is under, the higher the breakdown voltage is for a given spark gap. This means that the 20mm insulator gap was easier to jump than the 5mm gap inside the arc chamber at 80 psi. To fully test this engine design, I used a thick layer of hot glue to encase the whole insulated section. I just hoped that it would allow for enough time for a test before it melted. Although this appeared to be a success, this engine still had a number of flaws including an unpredictable arc path and minimal performance gains with the arc on compared to cold gas performance. It got 43.25 seconds of specific impulse versus the 38.98 seconds with no arc. Even with this 10% performance gain, this engine was still practically held together with hot glue. I machined another version out of brass with a wider constrictor tube and a slight narrowing before the nozzle to slow the flow through the arc and maximize the heat delivered to the air. It also had a smaller throat so there would be less mass to heat. This came at the expense of peak thrust, but should be made up before in specific impulse. This engine performed the best out of all the prototypes, getting almost a 20% improvement in specific impulse and peak thrust with the arc on. Although not as good as my combustion-based designs, this engine topped out at 47.79 seconds of specific impulse, which is better than any cold gas thrust drive made. The exhaust plume was also now visible because it was being heated as well as ionized by the arc. Shock diamonds were barely visible in the plume as repeated bright spots, and the arc would sometimes extend slightly beyond the nozzle. The swirl injection also had a visible effect as the glowing part of the exhaust appears to curl around itself. This thruster did have some electric emission effects, making gas tubes around it glow and messing with the focus of a few of my cameras. This is a huge success as far as my home-built engines are concerned, but why is the thruster's specific impulse so much lower than commercial alternatives? It comes down to three main factors. I'm using air as a propellant. It's not the best for this application and using hydrogen or other low-mass gases would improve the efficiency greatly. My arc is only 450 watts. More power means more heating and therefore more specific impulse. My feed pressure is also very low at only 6 to 7 atmospheres. Commercial versions can use feed pressures in excess of 100 atmospheres. Improving any or all of these factors would increase the efficiency greatly. However, that is beyond the scope of my home testing setup. Thankfully, this type of arc jet can still find practical uses on a small scale, including being the basis of a homemade hypersonic wind tunnel. With each iteration of this thruster making improvements upon its predecessors, this has been a great research and learning opportunity to further my understanding of this unconventional propulsion system.